Okay, we're picking up from yesterday. This is the first example. Uh, there's the work shown to you from our worksheet, and you can check to see if you got your answers correct. We'll follow up with these next two examples and give you those answers. So, what is different about example two compared to example one? Okay, it doesn't tell us what the quadrant is. Second of all, it doesn't give a sine or cosine, does it? Gives us tangent. So that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Tangent, first of all, is 15 over 8, so therefore cotangent is over 15. Everybody will write that much on the test at the very least. Second of all, I now have a choice between a number of formulas. I can use sine squared of theta or cosine squared of theta, either one, or I can use 1 plus tangent squared of theta equal to secant squared of theta, or I can use 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. So you tell me the second one is going to be our option. Here's why. We're given tangent, aren't we? And we're going to use a formula that has tangent in it. I could also choose to use the very last one, 1 plus cotangent squared or cosecant squared, but um, I'm going to just use the, uh, the second one. Okay. In fact, it will always work out that you can either use the first one or the second one. You never actually have to choose one. Fair enough? So, 1 plus, I'm going to square tangent. What's 15 squared? 225 over 54 is equal to the secant squared of theta. Instead of writing 1, I'll write it as a fraction of the common denominator. So what did I have? 4 over 54 plus 225 over 54 is equal to secant squared of theta. 54 plus 225. Both sides. Square root of 289 over 64. What's square root of 289? 17. What is the square root of 64? 17 over 8. So, secant, I'm going to write 17 over 8, but here's the problem. Is it positive or is it negative? Let's set up our chart, okay? All students take calculus. Let's look at our result. Is the value of tangent positive or negative? It is positive. The tangent is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So I know I'm either in the first or first quadrant and third quadrant. I know I'm either in the first or the third. It says that cosecant is less than zero. It's negative. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So where is sine negative? Three and four, right? So where is the overlap? Where is the quadrant that satisfies both of those conditions? Third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, the tangent is the only one that's positive. The others will all be negative. So secant is negative 17 over 8. How do I get cosine? Negative 8 over 17. Now I would like to find cosine or sine. If you would like to set up sine over cosine is equal to tangent, you can. But I want to warn you, a lot of people make mistakes when they do that with these. So I'm going to go back and use my very first rule. Sine squared theta plus 
cosine squared. What do you get if you square 8? 17. It's equal to 1. I'm going to write 1 as a fraction with a common denominator. What should my fraction be? 389 over 389. Subtract my 64. Sine squared of theta will be equal to, what's 289 minus 64? Square root both sides. What's the square root of 225? 16 minus 14 is like 17. And remember, it's plus or minus, but we decided that we're working in which quadrant? Third, and it's sine positive or negative in the third. Negative. Got a negative 15 over 17. What would cosecant be? 16. Are you feeling a little bit better than yesterday? take a square root, it will be plus or minus. When you take a square root of a variable, you always have to list plus or minus. This is probably the most popular question. How do we determine if it's positive or negative? I first determine the quadrant I'm working with. The tangent is positive. Right? 16 over 8 is positive. So I'm either in the first or third quadrant. One of those two. Yeah, they are. We have a negative x and a negative y, and tangent is y divided by x, and so that will give you a positive result. So, okay, second of all, um, it says cosecant is less than zero. So that means sine is negative, okay? Cosecant and sine are negative. So where is sine negative? Sine is negative in the third and the fourth quadrant, positive in the first and the second. So the overlap is the third quadrant. So the third quadrant tells me tangent is only when it's positive, and cosine and sine, secant and cosecant are negative. All right. Let's try to get this last one. This was a little bit more difficult. Okay. Cosecant is negative 4. All right. Got yourself a point. I want another point. Going to get 1 over 4. Two points. Well, I know sine. So I'm going to use sine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta equal to 1. Yep. What's squared negative 1? 1. Square 4? And I'm going to rewrite 1. Square root, and you can't take the square root of 15, you can. Well, you can take the square root of 16, which is right. Cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 15 over 4. I don't know if it's positive or negative. 
So I will set up my four quadrants. It says cosecant is negative, or sine is negative. Sine is negative into thirds plus fourths. And it says tangent is less than zero. What does it mean for tangent to be less than zero? Tangent is negative. Tangent is negative into second and to fourth. Where is the overlap? Fourth quadrant. What's the second thing that would be positive? Cosine and secant would be positive. The others would be negative. So we have positive for the 15 over 4. What do I do to get secant? Right, 4 over the root of 15, and we don't really like that, so we multiply the top and bottom by. We get 4 root of 15 over 2. As I have sine and cosine, I'm now going to find tangent by doing sine, which is negative 1 fourth, divided by cosine. Root of 15 over 4. How do I divide two fractions? Right? Before I multiply the top and bottom by the root of 15, I just want to show you a small trick to save a little bit of time. We don't like this because the root of 15 is in the denominator, right? So I'm going to have to multiply the top and bottom. So we'll do that in a second. But while it's in the bottom, let's flip it now to get cotangent. Right? When you flip it, what do you get? Negative root of 15. That way I, I don't have to do it twice. Otherwise, you, you would have had to have done it twice. Right? So tangent, I will multiply the top and bottom by the root of 15. I get negative root of 15 over 15. Okay, let's find out. So, I'm giving you the remainder of the hour, which is about 30 minutes. And I have, um, there's one mistake here. I should get negative 12 over 13. But I have three problems, for, or four problems for you. I feel that these are very doable problems. I'm going to uh, quote the answer to you. I know that they're not easy, but I need you to just put forth your best effort. Okay, your best effort and really work hard. Just understand that you might make some mistakes. We might have to correct them, um, but that's okay. So this is your assignment. This is your last assignment. Tomorrow I'll be giving you a cover sheet as well as a study guide. It will take two days to work on the study guide, and we'll have two checkpoints. That's the job. Hopefully, we'll have a wait a minute. Wall of inspiration happens in the middle of the day, right?